Other chaos surrounding the general election's advanced polling process, scores of police and defense force officers promoted just before heading to the polls, and a possible $1 billion taxpayer burden because of the new Bahamar Heads of Agreement. We've got these stories and others. I'm your host, Nico Scavella, and this is the Tribune's Top 5. Former Hotel Corporation of the Bahamas Chairman Michael Scott this week said the Bahamar deal with its new buyer CTFBM could possibly cost Bahamian taxpayers around $1 billion. Mr. Scott told the Tribune that the deal recently agreed to by the Christie administration, as outlined in the Heads of Agreement released last month, amounts to a disgraceful betrayal of the government's sacred duty to protect the public interest. Mr. Scott said that during his tenure as chairman of the Hotel Corporation in 2011, the Bahamar deal with the original developer, Sarkis's Merlion, was renegotiated to the significant advantage of the country. He said while that agreement contained numerous infrastructural obligations for the developer, including the developer being responsible for electrification and other utilities, the new heads of agreement does not, meaning that the Bahamian people will now have to pay for them. Additionally, Mr. Scott said that the 2011 version of the deal mandated that Bahamar build 3,450 rooms, while the new deal has reduced that number to 425. He also said there was a requirement to build a marina in the previous deal, as well as one for Bahamar to build a second golf course. However, he said both stipulations have disappeared from the new deal. As a result, Mr. Scott questioned what on earth could have compelled those involved in the negotiations from the government side, individuals such as Education Minister Jerome Fitzgerald and Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson, to give such, quote, fantastic terms to perfect luck, the special purpose vehicle created by the Export-Import Bank of China, Bahamar secured creditor, to purchase the resort's assets from the receivers. Mr. Scott said, and I quote, in transferring all of these infrastructural obligations onto the backs of the Bahamian people, the government has betrayed the citizens of this country and future generations to come. At a time when our debt continues to skyrocket in the face of an anemic economy and grossly irresponsible fiscal policies, where are we supposed to come up with the hundreds upon hundreds of millions it will cost to fulfill these obligations. Perhaps Prime Minister Perry Christie plans to squeeze the taxpayer even more than he already has. In their rush to open the resort as a last-minute election ploy, Mr. Scott added, the PLP has cut an amazingly sweet deal for the buyers while burdening the Bahamian people with additional financial responsibilities totaling somewhere in the region of $1 billion." End quote. Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade this week announced that the Royal Bahamas Police Force has promoted 851 officers, an announcement that came just before officers prepared to cast ballots in the general election's advanced poll. The promotions take effect January 1st. Two superintendents have been promoted to chief superintendents, 76 assistant superintendents have been made superintendents, 90 inspectors have been promoted to assistant superintendent, while 107 sergeants have risen to the rank of inspector. Commissioner Greenslade also announced that 253 corporals have been promoted to sergeant, while 322 constables have been promoted to the rank of corporal. The announcement came days after Prime Minister Perry Christie revealed the government will finally pay police officers for working 12-hour shifts in 2013 and 2014, with the first payment of the outstanding sum to be issued on May 29. He said the second installment in overtime pay would come in the next budget cycle, but was not more specific. Mr. Christie said officers who have died or are retired will be paid in full. Meanwhile, Telus Bethel has been named Commodore of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force following a massive promotion exercise of 40... Meanwhile, Telus Bethel has been named Commodore of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force following a massive promotion exercise of 427 officers, described as the largest ever for the law enforcement agency. Commodore Bethel's confirmation comes more than two years after he began serving as acting Commodore of the RBDF. His position was made retroactive to March 2015. Commodore Bethel is among more than 400 men and women in the force who were promoted. In addition to Captain Bethel, Captain in addition to Captain Bethel, Captain Samuel Evans was appointed Deputy Commander of the RBDF. The promotions affect more than one quarter of Defense Force officers, a press statement said, and are in effect from May 1, 2015. The promotions comprise 66 officers, 17 warrant officers, 77 non-commissioned officers, and 284 enlisted personnel. Senior officer promotions include Captain Adrian Criswell, who was promoted from Commander. Other senior officers promoted to... Other senior officers promoted from the rank of Lieutenant Commander to Commander were Clarence Dean, Michael Saunders, Raymond King, Chapel Wims, Henry Daxon, and Frederick Brown. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram this week said no matter which party is elected to office on May 10th, the government will not be able to give police officers overtime pay as promised by Prime Minister Perry Christie because there is no money in the public treasury. 
Mr. Ingram also told supporters that if the free national movement wins the election, one of the first things it will have to do is, quote, borrow tens of millions of dollars to pay bills that the PLP government is now unable to pay and thus will not be able to fulfill some of its campaign promises right away. He also again raised the allegation that more than $800,000 was recently stolen from the Ministry of Finance, suggesting that theft was widespread in the public sector. Mr. Ingram also responded to the Ministry of Finance's statement issued on Tuesday, calling on him to provide information to police concerning his allegation. Mr. Ingram responded by suggesting that police likely won't be motivated to investigate the allegation so close to the general election, especially while they, quote, have yet to deal with the multiple reports on the have yet to deal with the multiple reports on the allegations of abuse in government departments." End quote. He referred to several outstanding investigations or unresolved allegations from Auditor General Terence Bastian over the past few years which have faded from headlines and questioned if anything ever came of these matters, including $700,000 in cash and checks not deposited on the Department of Customs bank account Nabico. This matter was first reported in 2014. In response, however, Mr. Christie said, and I quote, I asked Mr. Ingram, and I want to say it just like this, how was he paying civil servants when he was spending over $500 million more than he was earning? How does a country do that? So if my treasury is broke and my deficit is nowhere near that deficit, tell him the same way he was able to run the country spending over $500 million more than he was earning and keep on paying civil servants. Tell him that is why he knows, when he uttered that statement, exactly how I am going to pay the police officers on the 29th of May, and they will be paid. He knows." End quote. Meanwhile, Deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis accused Mr. Ingram of spreading propaganda on the issue, while Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller said he was, quote, somewhat taken aback by the statements of a man who has served as Prime Minister for three terms. Mr. Miller, who also accused Mr. Ingram of spewing political propaganda, said if Mr. Ingram knew money was stolen from the Treasury, he should have reported the case to ensure that those responsible are hauled before the courts. In battle, Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlin Hall this week confirmed that his contract has expired and that he would not be seeking an extension, as he adamantly defended himself from harsh criticisms over his department's abysmal handling of the advanced polling process. During an interview with reporters at his Farrington Road office, Mr. Hall confirmed that his three-year contract for the position ended on Thursday, and frankly stated that it is now up to the government to, quote, do what they wish to do with regards to filling the position moving forward. Nonetheless, Mr. Hall charged that Wednesday's chaotic process was not his fault but instead the result of insubordinate or misguided officials within his department who did not follow his directives and instructions. Mr. Hall also suggested that permanent secretary in the Ministry of National Security Carl Smith, whom he appointed as senior returning officer for the advance poll, is the one to blame for the decision to literally corral thousands of voters into the Kendall G. Lysak's gymnasium instead of utilizing two locations as originally planned. Mr. Hall said despite giving specific instructions on what should take place just weeks prior, somehow the decision was made just to use one location. Harrison Thompson, the department's permanent secretary, was present during the interview and said he too gave certain directives to officials. However, he said those instructions were not followed. Nonetheless, Mr. Hall said he is not incompetent, telling reporters that he is an Oxford graduate. He added that his competency should not be judged by his department's ability or inability to deliver and perform. He also said that as a man with almost 50 years experience in the public service, most persons in authority have benefited from his contributions. Mr. Hall referred to the 2007 general election when he recounted the ballots for the election court during the controversy surrounding then-PLP Pinewood candidate Allison Maynard Gibson and the former member of parliament for the area, Byron Woodside. Mr. Hall said, and I quote, Everyone is entitled to an opinion. I respect the former prime minister and everyone in authority because they are made in the image of God. So if someone is going to say I'm incompetent, that's their opinion. But I'm an Oxford graduate, not blowing my own horn. I've been to some of the best universities in the world. I'm not incompetent, end quote. Thousands of irate voters this week expressed frustration in Wednesday's chaotic advance polling process, which saw scores of people having to wait for hours in the hot sun, flaring tempers amongst jostling voters, and police struggling to control the scene. In light of the chaos, Prime Minister Perry Christie said Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlin Hall's ability to run a successful May 10th general election is a matter under review, as he told reporters he was disappointed over the process. While Mr. Christie would not reveal whether the government intended to remove Mr. Hall from overseeing the next election, considering the botched poll and the equality referendum that also experienced issues last June, the Prime Minister said, and I quote, we are going to make the right decision for the country, end quote. He intimated apparent surprise that the process had not gone as smoothly as officials expected, saying every effort was made to prepare and be able to deal with issues of this magnitude. 
Mr. Christie blamed administrative challenges and a decision by, quote, someone senior that early voters from all 39 constituencies could all be accommodated in one facility instead of two as originally planned, revealing that these issues led him to call in the assistance of senior officials with experience in elections to assist Mr. Hall. Asked to respond to critics who would accuse the government of attempting to steal the election by frustrating the process, Mr. Christie said to suggest this was lunacy. He said he did not understand this assertion because, quote, everyone got a chance to vote, end quote. However, some people claim they were turned away from the advanced poll, either because their name was not on the register or because they were told they did not have the right documents, among other issues. In addition to other complaints, some voters claimed their names were not on the advanced poll register, although they had applied to vote early. Some residents of the Family Islands also complained that they were only advised at the last minute that they could not do early voting in their communities, but had to travel to Nassau instead. Additionally, the advanced poll started around 9.20 a.m. instead of 8 a.m because ballot boxes were delivered late. As a result, voting, which should have ended at 6 p.m., was extended to 7.20 p.m. Mr. Hall did not give a specific reason for the late start, only stating that after working a 24-hour shift getting the ballot boxes packed and dispatched, the boxes for the advance poll in New Providence left at 7.45 a.m. headed for the gymnasium, which is not too far away. Nonetheless, those events have intensified calls for Mr. Hall to be disciplined. The night of the advance poll, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram called on the government to retire Mr. Hall, a man he has criticized before. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's how you can. Just log on to our website, www.trivian242.com. Like us on Facebook, Trivian News Network. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Trivian242. Or send us a tweet at Tribune242.